welcome back. So today we are doing something a bit different. So as you can see, I'm in the airport. I'm actually about to board a flight back home. My husband and the kids actually just went to use the bathroom, but when they come back, we are headed to St. Thomas. So we're actually going to St. John. Um, I am starting a new series here on my channel, and it's all about my husband and I and how we just purchased a plot of land back home in the Virgin Islands. So we are going to tour the land for the second time. We actually just closed a couple days ago um, via Zoom. And now we're actually going to finish the process home, meet with the architect and um, just see what's going on. So stay tuned because I'm going to tell you all about this process. It's not allowed on any Delta flight. Federal law prohibits tampering with, disabling, or destroying restroom smoke detectors. There are 10 exits on this plane. All right, so we are here eating breakfast at High Tide in Cruise Bay, St. John. And then today what we have planned for is we're gonna actually go see the land. Um, and the beach. Just go kind of walk it, um, see what the surveyor has done as far as the bounds that they put up um, to see where our land starts and stops. And then we're gonna show our parents the land. And after that, really, I think we're just gonna go to the beach or whatever. But I want to take you guys along with me I so you can go to see the, beach. the land. And Maya wants to go to the beach too. She doesn't care anything about land or building or construction or anything. She just wants to go to the beach. Why do you want to go to the beach so bad? You were just here in July. Because, huh? because, because I want to make a sandcastle. Okay. Okay, breakfast is here. I got some French toast, bacon, eggs. Malachi got the cheese. Is it a vegetable quesadilla, Malachi? Mm -hmm. Vegetable and cheese quesadilla. Maya is eating eggs and French toast. And Peter is eating, what do you, what do you have, babe? Chicken and waffles. Chicken and waffles. <laughs> and then that's a breakfast meal. Yeah, brown. Yeah, I think it's a little overcooked, but other than that, everything looks great, especially my French toast and my mimosa. All right, guys, so we are here by the land. I am so excited. So we are just taking a walk, surveying the land. We saw it one time before we actually made the purchase, but we were in Georgia when we were doing everything. So this is the first time that we're seeing it since we actually closed on it. So Maya and I are on top of the land. Peter and Malachi have walked down. They're looking at the trees, where the bound post is, what the surveyor did before um, we closed. And they, uh, ha there's flags here that shows the bounds of where the land starts and stops. So um, Peter is checking that out. Uh, I am on top. I've decided not to walk the land, even though it's not really steep. I don't want to go down there. <laughs> and also I have Maya with me, so we're pretty safe here on top of the road. But I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna turn the camera around so I can show you guys where it starts and stops. So here it is. So it starts from this pole and we are about uh, on an acre of land here on St. John. Um, you can't really see the view because the trees are in the way, but once we start excavating, you'll actually see the amazing ocean view that we have. But what I'll do is I'll insert a picture of where the neighbors um, 
the picture of the neighbor's view so you can kind of get an idea of how our view was going to look um, but anyways it goes from that pole all the way down not even from that pole but all the way down to the other pole at the end of the road so it's a pretty big lot we'll probably not build on the whole lot but we'll be um you know potentially building at least half of it or maybe even less um, but the guys are coming back up and yeah we are just here checking it out all right so i'm going to show you guys the view um this is from the neighbor side but i think we're going to actually get the brunt of it once we start clearing um but if you can see through these bushes here and you can actually see the ocean it's going to be so beautiful once we're cut down and excavated hey guys we're making some i i'm making a sea soap in my mommy what are you making a crab yeah mommy making a crab so we're making something and mommy you can make a boat too really yeah let's make a boat wow oh, there's a starfish too a duck Alright, so we just came back from the property and I promised that I would go over the process on buying the land and kind of how we got to where we're at. So um, my husband and I knew that we wanted to purchase something back home here, either in St. Thomas or St. John or even possibly in St. Croix in the Virgin Islands. And I would say November of 2020, um, my husband took a trip home and he came home excited about possibly buying um, a piece of land or something like that. And I was like, oh, no, we're not doing that. Just because growing up in the islands, I always remember that, um, you know, adults or even my parents, like when you're building something, it just takes forever. So I tried to convince him that we could get something here um, possibly on St. Thomas and that we should look at a condo instead um, of getting land um, something that's already built we would just renovate it and then rent it out when we're not here like an Airbnb or something like that and then when we're here um, we would have some place to stay like a two-bedroom condo a bedroom for us and then a room for the kids um, so we were kind of set on that track um, January of the, this year um, started looking for condos online um, I'll put some websites below if you're interested on in looking at some of the sites that we use for our condo search um, 
but we were seeing some good prices some okay prices um ranging from like two hundred thousand to three fifty for three bedroom condos three hundred and fifty thousand for condos on saint thomas and saint croix um saint john was out of the question because all of the condos i think there was one the cheapest one was was like eight hundred thousand so we were like no we cannot get a condo on saint john um, but as we started to look at those condos, we realized that they have very hefty condo fees. Um, so anywhere from a minimum 200 a month to 500 a month, you're going to pay for condo fees in the islands. Um, so on top of a mortgage, those condos fees are ridiculous, unrealistic. So we decided not to go that route. So about two or three months had gone by and we were still looking at condos and just any property that we could see. We even looked at a boat slip. We just wanted to own a piece of paradise. Um, but anyway, my dad called me one afternoon and he said that he actually, he still lives here on St. John, but he um, saw a piece of land that was for sale he saw a for sale sign called me i was actually on the way to pick up maya we were in atlanta and he said oh there's a great piece of land it's huge um you know and i think it was like an acre it has an amazing view it's in a good part of st john and i was like oh wow you know i was super excited just thinking of we could possibly have something on st john um, of course, he didn't know the price of it, but he knew the realtor um, because her name was on the sign. So he gave me her information to call her to see how much they were selling the land for. Um, so I called her the same day and that particular piece of land was super expensive. And I'm talking about over 400000 just for that acre. Um, being a it, where it was it was a flat piece of land and it was huge more than really what we would need or want um so that was out of the question um my um hopes got shot real quick um but a couple days later that same realtor um and she is works out of cruise bay realty i'll link their website down below as well um sent me an alternative piece of land because I told her, I said, no, that first piece would be too expensive for us. There would be no way that we can afford it um, with everything else that we have going on in the States. So she sent me something else that was priced way lower. Um, I don't think it was um, fully um, available on the websites or anything like that. Um, but she was the listing realtor. So she sent that to me. I looked at the pictures and just got super excited. Um, so, and that was the land that you guys just saw, the, um, the piece that we just bought. Um, so that day I showed my husband, he was super excited about it. And at that point we were about a month away from visiting home. I'm taking the kids back home for summer vacation here on St. John with my parents. So we decided that when we um, get back here, that we would actually go and see the property. And when we did, we fell in love with it. Um, so then the process starts with the bank. So of course, just like most people, we did not have a ton of money sitting down where we could just buy land cash. If you can, more power to you, but we are not that type of um, people. So we, um, or we're, we're just not there yet. So we actually um, contacted a local bank here on St. Thomas. They're actually based in Puerto Rico. Um, and the name of that bank is Banco Popular. So the application process was kind of a nightmare. Um, so it's not um, electronic, like most mortgage applications or loan applications that you would see in the state side. You can go online, fill out an application. That's not the case. We were given someone's name to either call or email at the bank. Um, we were given her information to contact her that we had seen a piece of land and we wanted to get pre-qualified. So I actually emailed the bank um, and she sent me back an actual paper packet. I was just like, wow, they're still using paper packets to complete mortgage applications. But I was already down here, I was still here. Um, so I filled out the application and they asked for um, items like paycheck stubs, W-4s, 
um, sorry, W-2s, um, tax returns, driver's license, um, pretty much the same things that you would um, present if you're applying for a mortgage stateside. So email that to her and we were here at that time for about a week. We had another week left um, here um, and I was hoping that it would be a quick turnaround. We're pre-qualified or something like that. Um, but it wasn't. I actually had to go walk into the bank and ask for a update on my application. Um, so when I was here, I actually had to go to the bank twice to get an update of just the application. So when I actually went into the bank, I got her to actually sit down, look at our file, and we actually walked out with a pre-qualification letter. And then with that, we were able to um, present that to the realtor who was listing the property and present an offer on the land. So after the offer was accepted, um, we started the um, loan approval process through the bank here. And let me rewind, you might be wondering why we didn't get a loan through a stateside bank. Well, if you're financing land, in the Virgin Islands, um, unless you get a write-out loan, a personal loan, or home equity line of credit, something like that, where you can actually pay with a check or cash, you cannot finance land in the Virgin Islands um, with a stateside bank or foreign bank. So it would have to be through a local bank. So we did that. Um, the approval process and the whole loan process from application to close took about four months. So if you're thinking it's gonna be like a mortgage in the States where it's like two to three, well, three to four weeks, um, because I think our last home in the States, we closed within a month. Um, that's not the case here. It takes about four months. You have to get a survey um, done on the property and that took about a month to get that schedule and done. Um, just going through the underwriting process took about a month closing getting that schedule took a couple of weeks so if you're going through that process if you're thinking about buying property in the virgin islands and you want to go through a local bank and you don't have cash just be prepared for the wait um and they let us know that in advance that it would take three to four months so we were expecting that i was secretly hoping that it would take less than four months but it took the whole four months to close on the property um, so we just closed um, last week and now we're here to check it out and then um, we are going to document the process of building on the land and excavating and doing the plumbing and all of that. So definitely stay tuned for the rest. Um, we'll be back soon. Um, we have already met with an architect um, to give her some ideas of the plans that we think that we want for the land. Um, other than that, after that, I think we have to go through the process of getting building permits and things like that. So Peter and I are new to this. We are don't know what to expect as far as cost or anything like that or the process, and I'm sure they're gonna be bumps in the road, but we are gonna document all of it. So definitely stay tuned um, so that you can see where this takes us, where this journey takes us. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye-bye.